What I'd like to talk to you about today is New Year resolutions. I personally don't make them. The only one that I do make is that I want to be happy because I think that can't do any harm. Uh, but a lot of people do do them. And I think it's 85% of them fail or something as ridiculous as that. And actually, whether the percentage is right or wrong, it's a high number of people that will fail. So why is that? Well, it's because we're often realistic, unrealistic even. And they are difficult to keep just by the very nature of them. First of all, one of the ones that uh, people normally go for is losing weight. And they do that after Christmas because obviously they've eaten too much and whatever. But also at a time that is in the middle of winter when what we really crave is comfort food anyway because it's bleak out there and cold and everything else. So straight away, they're making it difficult for themselves. But the problem is that half the time, for instance, I stick with losing weight on that one, it's not about the weight. The weight and the reason why you've put it on a lot of the time is actually purely the symptom of something much deeper. And I'll give you an example. I was at a workshop, funny enough, which was around at New Year's resolutions, and there was a lady there and her resolution was to lose weight. She'd been told by a doctor she needed to lose weight. And by doing a few exercises, we uh, came to the conclusion that actually she didn't want to lose weight. That was a problem. Um, she saw being on the diet as restricting her to be herself because a lot of the weight was from uh, alcohol. And not because she was an alcoholic in any way, shape or form, but purely because she liked going out and partying. And to her, not drinking meant you were not the soul in life of a party. Therefore, there was no point going out. Therefore, I would just stay at home and feel miserable. And actually, all the diets failed just for that reason. Once she understood that she wasn't losing weight for herself, but because the doctor said, and I know it wasn't her best interest, um, and all the implications that had, where she felt that, you know, she was, her personality was taken away from her in essence. So she always failed. She just always failed. And once she got that, but she succeeded. So sometimes it's about just asking yourself the right questions. It's also that we don't understand how change works. Uh, everything that we learn is actually done in one or two ways. The first one is uh, it's a one-off event. So when you're two years old, which is the example I use all the time, your mum will have said to you, don't touch that knife, you cut yourself. And at some point you will have to touch the knife and you have to cut yourself. And you now know unconsciously knife equal pain. So you're not going to go uh, out of your way to go and cut yourself. So that's a one-off way of learning. The repetition, which is the other one, is something where you would have had to learn a process. So for instance, um, opening a door, tying up your shoelaces, brushing your teeth, all of that we do unconsciously, like most things. But we had to learn really paying attention to each step of that process. And I'm not going to bore you with it, but you know, it generally starts with unscrew the thing of a toothpaste, put toothpaste on toothbrush, put water in glass and blah, blah, blah. And everything else that we do follows that. We've learned through one or two ways. And that is actually why just saying, oh, this year I'm going to do this isn't going to work because you're going to go against some of the unconscious learning mechanisms you've learned over the years. And unless you uh, understand how that works and unless you really get how change works you will fail in a nutshell and it's purely as I said because people are going about it the wrong way because we're making it unrealistic and too difficult to keep but also because we're not asking them the the right questions so for instance if someone um, wants to stop smoking which is another uh, common new year resolution they blame the cigarettes. They, they, they say that the reason why they smoke is because they're addictive. Where, yeah, that is very true indeed. But it's not just that. I used to be a really heavy smoker. And I mean, really heavy smoker. Um, and I managed to give up. And it's been 10 years. But it was about why do I smoke? And 
that actually came up uh, on a New Year. New, uh, no, sorry, it was a Christmas Eve, and it was in France, and it was one of my little um, cousin's nephew thing. But just, I'm standing outside, having a fag. It's literally, it was minus 10 or something ridiculous like that. And he says to me, come outside. And I'm like, don't stay here, it's too cold. He said, but you're outside. He was quite young at the time. And I said, well, yeah, I am, I'm having a, a, a cigarette. And he says, why do you smoke? And to be honest with you, um, whilst I could tell him because I enjoy it, because whatever, to your five-year-old, that makes no sense whatsoever. How can you enjoy inhaling smoke? And it was actually that that started kind of a process of like, well, actually, why do I smoke? And the reason why I smoked was because I didn't know how to relax. Some would argue I still don't, but it was my way of stopping. And in the job that I had back in the day, it was actually the only time I would take a break. So it was also the time where we would sort a lot of things out because we would go outside, have a fag, and because we were away from desks and computers and paperwork, we would often find solutions to uh, problems just because we were chatting about nothing to start off with. And I found that I probably translated that at home too. It would be my way of stopping. So in order to, to, to be successful at giving up smoking, what I really needed to do was find new ways to either solve problems at work or uh, relax both at work and at home. So it's not that I hadn't tried before. I tried hundreds of times. I tried all sorts of stuff. I tried hypnotherapy, acupuncture. I tried everything you can think of, even like mental sprinkle, whatever on your breakfast type thing. I tried and it didn't work. But this did purely because I knew why I was smoking and why I needed to change in order to stop the, the, the bad habit in essence. And it's the same for instance for people who are single and they often decide that as a new year resolution, they want to find someone. But if you ask them why they're single, the question or the answer even is always, well, because the right person hasn't come along. No, 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 no. It's not that it's because the right person doesn't come along. That's easy to blame someone out but you don't even exist or even met yet. No, why are you single if it's not out of choice? It's because there's something deeper than that that is stopping you from meeting the right person. So be careful if you make a new year resolution. The starters don't make more than one because you're definitely setting yourself for failure here. And the problem is, the more you fail, the more you're disappointed in as you try, so it's a vicious circle. But it can be a vicious circle the other way too. So if you do decide to um, have a new year resolution, then please uh, be careful that you really do the work around that and that you don't set yourself uh, up for failure in essence. So, so how do you go about it to be successful? Well, as I just said, the first thing to do is to focus on the one thing. What is the one thing that you want to achieve the most, right? And also remember that New Year resolution, so to speak, so resolution don't have to just be for New Year. You know, you set yourself one challenge, one thing you really want to achieve now, and then there's nothing to say that in six months time you can't do something else, as opposed to waiting for the next New Year. Because it seems to be that it's only at New Year that we do these things. and. It's obvious why it's to do with Christmas, whether it's been a good or a bad one, and the fact it's a, the ending of a year and the beginning of another one. It always, um, whether you realize you're doing this or not, by the way, sometimes it's unconscious reflection, uh, but sometimes it's very conscious. I'll do it quite consciously. But yeah, first thing, focus on just one thing. What is the most important thing for you to achieve? Second, you need to ask yourself, okay, so have I tried anything to solve this before? And if you have, quite literally, pen, paper, and you find uh, there's a PDF attached to this video that asks all the questions uh, slightly differently, and obviously there's not me explaining everything, but it's a good place to start. So write down everything you've tried before. Then write down why it didn't work. Now, Again, we're not going into blame mode here. Why did it not work? So for instance, when I gave up smoking, uh, I tried hypnotherapy. The reason why it didn't work for me is because hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy is not well suited to me, it's too general. I need something like what I do, which is NLP, and that's tailored to the person. So that's probably why, although at the time I didn't know that, 
it didn't work. The second one is uh, acupuncture I tried. Why did that not work? Well, actually, I do believe acupuncture works for certain things because I'm currently doing a course of it. Um, but at the time, again, it didn't work. And why was that? I hate needles. Uh, and I really still had a hang up on needles back then, where now the course I'm doing, she uses seeds as well as needles. And I've come to prefer the needles to the seeds because they hurt less. So ask yourself, right, okay, I've tried A, B, C, D, and it depends obviously on what you're trying to achieve, but I've tried this, hasn't worked. Why is that? Try this, hasn't worked. Why is that? Is it that it's not suited to you? Is it that you need more of it? What, what is it? Then, um, you've got to think of also along the lines of timing or was it just like for me for instance the hypnotherapy acupuncture at the time where the wrong methods but what other methods are similar that could work for you and where you're in the right mindset because with the smoking and the hypnotherapy i probably just wanted a magic pill that was going to take it away without me doing anything and actually, um, that's also probably why it didn't work because it isn't just a magic pill. You do need uh, to put a bit of effort into certain things. Otherwise, if you're relying on something else to do it for you, it's not likely to work, to be fair. So first thing, don't go into victim mode. Uh, don't look for excuses as to why it didn't work. Look also at timing. Was it the right time in your life to do that? Because that has a massive impact. And I know we all want everything to happen yesterday, but timing is really important. Next, language. Language is very, very important because depending on what you say to yourself, you kind of have given up before you've even started. So do you have any self-limiting beliefs? Do you have some self-fulfilling prophecies? because they work against you. And a lot of the time you need to know where they come from as well. So a safe limiting belief would be something like, um, good thing has never happened to me. You know, something that you say in, in passing, so to speak, or I don't have much good luck. That could be true. Um, some would argue that I haven't got much luck either. Well, I would argue that. But um, it's also because it's not luck, it's I'm very clumsy. So yes, I do enjoy myself regularly, but that's me. That's because I rush around too much. That's because of various things. And sometimes, yeah, I just have bad luck, but sometimes I also have good luck in my bad luck happening because element of timing, something brings something else. Um, so do you say certain things to yourself that actually put you in a very negative uh, mindset that actually makes you fail before you've started and it's a difficult one um to, to identify sometimes because i've worked with some people who thought they were really positive and after keeping a safe talk diary for a little while they realize that actually you know they're extremely negative and they beat themselves up all the time and that's why they're not getting certain results Talking of self-talk, there may be something coming up, well, there will be something coming up once I've pulled my finger out, um, and soon um, to help you with that. Next, oh, actually, it was self-talk. The self-talk is the next point I wanted to talk to you about. And notice how all these things, as we're talking about language, start with self, self-remitting belief, self-fulfilling prophecies, self-talk we can really be our worst 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 on enemy and we don't even see that we think a lot of the time it's things that happen to us when actually we create the circumstances to let these things happen so to give yourself the best chance is to remove that victim mode that we can all fall into quite easily to be honest but once you know about it and you consciously decide that you're not going to do that, you're halfway there. And you will find times where actually you uh, start off into victim mode. As long as you catch yourself and then change it, then that's okay. You're only human. We all are human. We all find it difficult at times. The next point is actually to take responsibility. And that goes hand in hand with a victim mode because if you're letting life happen to you, then you are a victim and you're not taking responsibilities for the results. Now, there's certain things we can't control. There's most things we can't control, to be honest with you. Um, if you take, for instance, when uh, 
we found my dad dead, you it's easy to go into victim mode. What why is all these bad things happening to me? Um, because it was like in a series of events, which actually didn't even stop that back, carried on through the year. But I have the one thing that I have actually is the choice to go into or pull me or actually think pull me but I will turn this around and that's something that we don't often do I, I see a lot especially on Facebook where people say oh yeah but that's my lot well yeah it is your lot but take responsibility for that because that's you that's made that happen not anybody else um, and if you don't want that then you need to do something about it. And the only way you're going to do something about it and get what you do want is by taking responsibilities. Then you need to go into the symptoms, which I kind of like touched on earlier. To make a new year resolution successful, we need to understand what's hiding behind the problem. With um, eating and drinking, for instance, or comfort shopping, that sort of stuff, it's often filling a void, feeling something that we're not being fulfilled about, or we, we need to create something else to, to put into that void, to make it okay, to make us feel better. And we may know that we are a comfort eater, drinker, shopper, whatever, but we don't necessarily know why we do it, or it's just a reaction, or it was a bad day, or oh, it was a good day, so you can celebrate. Um, but what is behind that? I know someone who um, uh, was a terrible comfort eater and he was always on a diet and he was of the way that, you know, he was. But the real problem was um, his marriage and not facing up to uh, the problems there and saying that he was working at it, but he wasn't. Um, working at it doesn't mean still being there and showing up every day it means actually doing something and once he, has, he started to put his mind to things that's when he started to lose the weight often um we look at one thing and we think that it's an obvious one but it's not always obvious i had someone come to me uh, a few years ago with uh, an issue which was completely kind of unrelated to what the real problem was which is that she was thinking of giving up her business because it just wasn't working. And the reason why it wasn't working uh, was because she felt unsupported by her family. And her husband, which she had been married to for 35 years at the time, they still knew each other in the sense that, you know, he takes his tea that way, she butters her toes that way and she has that jam, not that jam or whatever. So they knew each other inside out in that, these ways, but what they did not know anymore was who they had become because these conversations were not happening. So it's not always obvious what is behind something that's not working out for you. And in her case, when she fixed that, the business exploded actually because it was just that her mind was not towards the business. It was always about being a victim and, oh, no one supports me. I'm doing everything for everybody else. So once he started to take responsibilities, everything, everything changed. It's also about understanding how sometimes, as I just said, we can be our um, worst enemy, but it's because of self-esteem or it could be because of fear of success. Sometimes success actually does bring uh, a change in our circumstances, in ourselves, and therefore it can have a ripple effect on other aspects of our life. We also have two sides. We have the dark and the light, and we have the angel and the demon, so to speak. The dark and light elements, uh, a lot of us don't want to think that there is a dark side to us, but there is to all of us, quite literally, like the sky. <laughs> you know, the universe, you've got day and you've got night. It's not to say that the dark is necessarily bad, bad, bad. It's just that we see it as being bad. So we hide it as much as we possibly can. But you've got to sometimes go into that dark side in order to get to the lighter side. And people don't really like to do that. You also need to understand how we often have an angel and a demon sat on our shoulders. And both have the positive intention. So if, for instance, you are struggling uh, with your weight, 
it's probably because the angel would say, you've had a really bad day. You really don't need uh, that glass of wine uh, because you make your day worse because in essence, you're just going to make it worse for yourself because you might be a bit fatter sort of thing. And then you've got the demon on the other side going, oh, come on, you've had a really bad day. You deserve this. Both are trying to protect you and your best interests, but they're coming from two different places. So it can go against us on both sides of the coin. So what is the positive intention beyond the, the behavior that you're trying to change? So for instance, if you are single and you're struggling to meet somebody and you've tried everything, uh, because that's the thing I hear all the time, oh, I've tried everything, but actually if I haven't, uh, not really. So what's the positive intention by you still being single are you trying to protect yourself from being hurt for instance are you just scared that is gonna upset the fam family dynamics are you it can be so many reasons you know we haven't got all day to go into them but they can seriously be so so many reasons that stop us from getting what we want and once we've discovered that positive intention that is stopping us from achieving um we need to find free alternatives so for instance, drinking too much to relax to whatever, or if we take back my uh, example of um, smoking to relax, I had to find free alternatives. So whenever I wanted to have a cigarette, I had to go to those and do one of those instead. So one of the ones that I did, and some of you who know me will have noticed this, um, I really went to the nth degree to, 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 to feel, okay, when I want a cigarette, and this is before I gave up, by the way, what, what is the trigger? How does it start? And in my particular case, it started in the mouth. It was kind of like tingling. And that was kind of like what was giving me the urge. And normally, once I got that tingling, obviously I didn't realize that just like that, you know, I had to really think about it and look at myself and focus on all these triggers. If you go back to what we're saying about step-by-step -step process, learning, and how you put like, you know, the toothpaste on the toothbrush, blah, 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 I, I did that in reverse. And that's what you need to do. And for me, it was that tingling. So if I got the tingle, I normally would go for a fag. And then what I enjoyed in the smoking was um, taking in the smoke. I liked that feeling inside my throat, which I know sounds a bit weird to most people, but that's where it was. So I replaced this with having um, mint because I found that the mint was giving me this impression that I was having that down the throat. So I ended up being addicted to polos for a while. I was on about three packets a day, which is just as unhealthy to a degree. But now I restrict myself and I have three a day, they live in a little patch, which people always look at me a little bit weird when I start like nibbling little bits of polos, but I still do it to this day. Um, and I've reduced the numbers so that it's actually, it's okay, it's not an unhealthy number, I'm not breaking all my teeth just yet. So what three alternatives to what you're doing now would be acceptable to you? And you've got to think hard about that because if they're not acceptable to you, you're not gonna do it. So you're going to fail. So you really need to think, okay, so instead of that behavior, what could I do to get the same effect? So if you are a comfort eater and your thing's chocolate, you know, what could you do to replace the hit of pressure that you get out of having chocolate? Is it that you need to pamper yourself? You need five minutes, you need a bath. You need uh, to just drink a large glass of water. Whatever it is for you, because I cannot give you the answers. The answers are within you. You just need to get them out. Um, and once you have done that, every time you get that craving, you replace what you used to do, which is eat the chocolate, with one of these new alternatives. If you find one doesn't really work for you anymore, you tweak it, you just change it. There's nothing to say about it's set in stone. And then write down um, mini milestones. So, you know, by let's say a weekend, I would like, for the giving up smoking, for instance, I've reduced over time and then I gave up. So, you know, by week, whatever, I wanted to just be on like five a day, by week, whatever, four a day. And then, you know, from four a day to giving up, there was like a massive thing really, because I couldn't cut down any more than four a day. So I was gonna have to either stay to that and I knew that it wasn't gonna happen, it was gonna go back up or stop. So I set the date. 
And it's the same, you know, you look at it as a step-by-step -step process. So the long-term thing is, for instance, giving up smoking, but what are the mini milestones? Because it's always the same. We can feel overwhelmed because the task is just too big and it seems impossible. So put it into small chunks and celebrate every time you, you achieve one of these mini milestones. And you might take longer than you thought. It's a bit like a DIY job. You start at three o'clock thinking it's gonna take you five minutes and at nine o'clock you run into B&Q to pick up something because you know, it hasn't gone to plan at all. So sometimes it doesn't quite go to plan, but you've got to be prepared for that and accepting of that, as opposed to just throwing in the towel. And the issue is that with New Year resolutions, often at the first hurdle, we're like, oh, good. what's the point? And if you're prepared for the bad stuff that is going to be thrown your way, you are less likely to give up and you're giving yourself the best chance. So what are going to be the potential issues? Where might you struggle to achieve what you want to achieve? What if someone says something? Will that throw you off cue? Um, you know, think of all the eventualities because when you're ready and prepared, you're being proactive about them. If you let them happen to you, you're just reactive. And that's when you're more likely to not do the right thing. So to give yourself the best chance, you need to remember the only thing we are in control of is ourselves, not outside circumstances. Um, and to be completely honest with you, the number of times where I thought, oh, do you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to go and buy a packet of fang, no one will ever know, I'll just make it tonight and then I'll start, I'll stop again tomorrow and that's that. I've never done it, but it has come through my mind a pair of times when things have not gone my way or when there's been problems or when I felt I couldn't cope. I've never done it but it's crossed my mind, so be prepared that that might happen. And in my particular case, I've developed mechanisms so that, yeah, it does come through my mind, but it, 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 it goes out of the other ear sort of thing. So go back through all of this regularly. Go back through a PDF and see how far you've come, because it's very easy for us to forget certain things because we're attacked by so much information all of the time. And it's important to stop and look back on the progress, look back on the original idea, the motivation behind it, and also, you know, why we wanted to achieve it. Because again, that can completely go out of the way. We seek pleasure because it's an instant hit. And for instance, if someone is single and wanting to meet somebody, make sure that was a completely different conversation of course but make sure you're doing it for the right reasons uh in the same way if you're unhappy in a marriage make sure that you have exhausted all avenues before you decide to go and i think finally i will leave you with this what you need to do is to approach the problem from a place of understanding and being realis realistic about it if you know what can possibly go wrong, what you can put in place, how you can prevent it from going wrong, you're halfway there. And if it doesn't work, it's because you just need to start again from the beginning, find out whether it's the wrong method that you used or whether your mindset wasn't quite right at the time, whether the time is just not right because that happens too. But whatever you do, don't go into victim mode, don't go into I can never achieve anything kind of mode, just start again because if you don't you will never ever get what you want so it's try and error sometimes just be mindful of that so if you have any questions then feel free to ask me i hope i haven't blabbled on for too long uh i try not to but i can do at times and yeah i look forward to hearing your results too thank you have a nice day